Welcome to the Jim Florentine Comedy Metal Midgets Podcast on Riotcast.com. I'm trying to cut back, not that I have any, uh, commercials and ads and shit like that. I don't know, I just, they don't pay a lot of money. So, I'd rather you guys not sit through them. And then, you know, come to a show on the road or whatever like that or buy some merchandise, that's fine. That works out perfectly. I mean, you know, once in a while I'll do an ad, but just try to keep it to a minimum. Just go on fucking rants, get it over with, play a song, and move on. I know you guys don't give a shit about the advertising, even though it helps, but it's not great money for it. I'm like, ah, fuck it. I don't want to read that shit. So once in a while there will be one, but I'm going to try to cut back on it and just, just do straight podcasts. Just plug my comedy gigs and fucking move on from there. You know, because you watch any kind of TV or anything like that, it's just pure commercials, commercials, little programming, commercials, commercials. Just got to sit through that shit. You got to watch a YouTube video. It's a half hour, uh, 30 seconds of a commercial before you can watch a video. All of that bullshit. So we'll keep it to a minimum. What the fuck? Just come to one of my shows. That's beautiful. Nice. All right. Uh, November 6th, meet Don Jameson, Eddie Trunk. We do these uh, live dates with that metal show. If you're fans of that metal show. Just will be interest you. We just do uh, live stand up and storytelling and Q and A and all this bullshit. Uh, November six, Q Bar, North Glendale Heights, Illinois. November seven, Token Lounge, Westland, Michigan. November thirteenth, The Waiting Room in Buffalo, New York. And November fourteenth, The Palace Theater in Syracuse, New York. That's all uh, dates with Don Jameson and Jim Florentine. Then I'm doing on my own. November nineteenth through twenty one, Funny Bone, St. Louis, Missouri. Me, Jameson, are doing uh, November 28th, the Laugh It Up Comedy Club in Poughkeepsie, New York. And then me and Rich Voss are doing some shit in Connecticut. First week into December, Westport, Connecticut, Treehouse, December 4th. And uh, New Haven, Connecticut, December 5th. All the shit's up on JimFlorentine.com. And then January 8th, 9th, Boca Black Box Comedy Club in Boca Raton, Florida. So Gary will be there. Both nights, so if you guys want to come and, and meet Gary from Florida. You know, someone made a suggestion that we should do a... You guys should send in some uh, some a Q&A questions for Gary from Florida and let him answer them. I think that was a pretty good idea, so if you guys want to do that. Also, uh, someone recommended doing a Q&A with me if you guys want to ask some Q&A questions, and maybe I'll do a podcast on that too, just to mix it up a little bit. So Q&A questions from me or Gary from Florida. Send the comedy metal midgets at gmail.com. And eventually, you know, in about a month or so, I'll do a podcast on that. Once I get enough of them. Um, all right. That's it. Let's move on. This podcast is just going to be some random shit. You know, I got a lot of uh, suggestions for podcasts. And uh, some of the suggestions are good, but I just don't have enough material on. I'm like, God, I'd be good, but I, I can't make a whole hour or 45 minutes out of it so i'm gonna have to pass on it so i think i'm gonna do that every once in a while just do call just call it random shit and you know if i got a few minutes on it and then do that and then move on because you guys do send in a lot of good podcast suggestions uh just sometimes like i don't really know too much about that or i got a little angle on that and that's about it so that's what we'll do this week random shit i think we'll start with the fantasy football commercials if you watch football this season or any kind of sporting event, every commercial in and out of the game itself is for FanDuel or that other fucking whatever that other one is. I think they actually advertised on here. But just fantasy football. One day you can win. I won this. I won this. Enough. Okay. First of all, anyone that plays fantasy football is already playing it. You're not getting any new people playing it one, you know, a fantasy football one day. You can pick your team for each week or whatever. Everybody knows that. Everybody that's doing that, that's in that fucking goofy fantasy football world, is already on to it. They know what's going on. You're not getting anybody new. You're not getting the fucking guy that's never played fantasy football before to go, you know what, I'm going to try that. They're setting their ways. They're never going to play it. You're never going to get them. There's going to be a certain amount of the population and people that watch football are going to go, I'm not into that shit. That's not for me. I know a lot of those people. And then there's other people who are ah, just, you know, I don't know, whatever. I just fucking do it. It's, you know, it's good to just keep track of it and, you know, watch a bunch of different games. I don't like it, but I understand it. 
and those people know all about it. You're not getting anybody new. Why do we constantly get barraged with these fucking fantasy football commercials constantly? Now the announcers are talking about it during the game. Uh oh, third string running back comes in, you know, because two guys get hurt before him. Uh oh, man, this guy, imagine the fantasy football points he'd have if someone took him. I hope somebody took a chance on him. Ugh. Do we need that fucking drivel in the in the announcers too? It's amazing because I'm, mean, you know, one of the one of the things fantasy football people always say to defend it is it's gambling, which it is. They are putting money on it. You're trying to win or whatever. But the the NFL is so against gambling, yet they have no problem with their announcers and everyone else and fantasy football stats running on the bottom of the screen constantly. And the announcers talking about it. They won't, you know, they don't want the announcers to talk about the point spread. They don't want to mention anything. The injury report is all about gambling. The point spread is all about gambling. They don't want any of that shit. And we don't support gambling. And they try to, you know, New Jersey was trying to get sports betting and they keep fucking blocking it constantly. All of this stuff. Yet, you know, fantasy football is complete, 100% gambling. And you have no problem with the announcers making that. Talking about it. You, I really think that the NFL is nervous that it's going to get eventually people are going to slowly stop watching. It's so popular right now that it's going to hit that it's hit its peak and they know it's only going to go downhill from there because they're watering down the product and the fantasy football players are the only one that's going to keep it alive that are going to keep watching. The other people will, but it's slowly going to go, ah, I'm not into it anymore because you've watched the games. It's, you can't even get in the flow of the game with all the commercials and all the bullshit going on, the timeouts, the fucking, you know, uh, the challenge flag, uh, a turnover, we got to challenge that, we got to look at that, a touchdown, the referee's got to look at it. It's just so fucking long and boring that I really think they go, look, this is the only way we're going to be able to keep people is the dorks that play fantasy football are always going to watch. I mean, they're putting games on the fucking... Online now, last week there was a game, the Jaguars and Bills from London. You can only watch the game on your fucking computer. It was a 9.30 in the morning, 9.30 a.m. game in London. They did show it in the local markets, like in Buffalo and Jacksonville. You can watch it on your regular TV, your regular CBS channel. But the rest of the fucking world had to watch the game online. So if you got the NFL Sunday package fucking football thing that costs like 350 bucks to 400 a year, whatever it is, I have it. I fucking, I'm not happy about it. I got DirecTV cost me fucking $250 a month because I'm addicted to this football shit. I also got the baseball package. So, and I know I watch maybe three channels. Me and my son watch Nickelodeon and then I watch fucking uh, MLB channel the NFL Network, and maybe an uh, HBO or something like that. A couple movies here and there. That's it. I got 700 channels and I watch four. And I watch TV for maybe three hours a week. Maybe. And I and they got me. Because you have to have the fucking direct TV dish to get all the football games. I do get it on my phone, which I do like. That's very convenient. Where I can watch the games on my phone wherever I am. But AOL, oh no, it was Yahoo, Yahoo.com bought this fucking shit Buffalo Bills Jaguar games, two shit teams. And they only show, so if you have the NFL package, the Sunday DirecTV package, you can't watch that game. You cannot watch that game in the package that you spend a lot of money for. You can only watch it on your computer. Yahoo.com paid $20 million. The NFL charged them $20 million to put to have that game exclusively. And anyone, anyone around the world can watch the game on their, on their laptop or their, their tablet. $20 million bucks, And then the NFL comes out the next day. Go, 33 million people watch that game worldwide. All bullshit. They have fucking inflated those numbers. It was all bullshit. It was more like 1.2 million people watched it. Yahoo.com basically put the put it right on their homepage. So anyone that went to Yahoo.com for their news, you know, people go there in the morning. Let me see what, what happened overnight. The game was already streaming like right there. And that counted as two people. Somehow... 
they counted as two people watching that. So every time someone went on there, an 84-year-old grandmother that has no interest in football, looking at Yahoo.com to read some shit, that counted as a fucking as someone that watched that game. So it was all bullshit. Numbers were all lies. You know, there might be fucking, I don't know, there might be a couple thousand people living in China that's from America that go, yeah, you know what, I wouldn't mind watching that fucking game. I barely get any NFL games over here. 1.2 million or something like that people watching, not 33 million. What a success. It was amazing. Really, you just, you just, the NFL, you just fucking realize that people watch shit on their computer? Are you that behind the times? This is something we could build for the future. Yeah, wow. Welcome to the fucking future. Wow, you didn't know that people watch shit on their phones or their fucking laptops. That's crazy. That's how fucking clueless they are. But think about it. Yahoo paid 20 million. Supposedly they lost like $8 million or 6 to $8 million. Some report came out on that. But why wouldn't the NFL do that? The commissioner just goes to the NFL owners, there's 32 owners. Okay, look, Yahoo.com is going to give us $20 million for a fucking two shitty teams that nobody cares about outside their, their markets and barely anybody cares about the Jaguars in Jacksonville to begin with. Okay, so let's give them this shit game and they're going to give us $20 million. We're going to split that $20 million between 32 owners. So that's, I don't know. Off the top of my head, $700,000 I'm going to put in you guys' pockets. You guys in? We're in. Okay. It's on the fucking computer. That's all it is in a nutshell. Break it all down. They're not trying to expand their audience. Every fucking billionaire owner got another 700000 in their greedy fucking pockets. And that's it in a nutshell for a shit game. Next year we might do two or three. Yeah, I wonder why. Is that for the fans? Did you really do that for the fans? You know, some guy that's fucking, maybe a guy's a, a Bills fan that lives up in Buffalo and his kid plays soccer Sunday morning, fucking 8.30 in the morning, and he's done at like 10.30 or 11, and he's like, cool, I, I get home to watch the Bills game at 1, and now this motherfucker can't even watch the game unless he brings his fucking laptop to the soccer field. How does that guy feel? Did you really do this for the fans? Is that what you did it for? Because the game started at 9.30 in the morning because it was one of those goofy London games that nobody gives a shit about except for people in London who got nothing else to do. Like, ah, I'll go watch an American football game. People, Americans living over there. Or some British people go, ah, you know, I like it. Meanwhile, their fucking soccer, their football is way more fucking violent than American football. So the guy in Buffalo... Misses that game because he has to watch it on his fucking laptop. He can't watch that game. That's fucking awesome. Another, you know, a, a, a huge Buffalo fan in fucking Denver that got transferred his job. Fucking looks for, look forward to watching the Bills, but nope, his kid's on the soccer field. Fuck, I can't watch that game. It's on the computer. What the fuck? This is bullshit. I pay four hundred dollars a year for that fucking NFL package, and I can't even watch a game. But, you know, hey, the NFL, they're looking out for their fans. They, they do everything for the fans. Always remember that. All right. Enough of that. Periscope. I don't want a periscope. I'm not interested in periscoping. I don't give a fuck about it. Stop asking me. Dude, you periscope? No. No, I don't. I get a periscope this watch. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy some eggs. Uh, I'm gonna periscope to go. To, I'm going to the supermarket to go buy some eggs. I'm gonna periscope. So watch, watch me. Because I'm very lonely and I got a huge ego and I need people to just watch me constantly. I'm going to go buy eggs. This is going to be crazy. All right. Here I am. I'm walking into the fucking store. Yep. Whoop. There's the fruit. There's the vegetables. Hey, look at that guy over there. I would never wear those kind of shorts. Well, wow. That chick's hot over there. Not bad. Right. All right. Um, I see a wedding ring. All right. Excuse me. Yep. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm sorry. No, I'm, 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 I'm miss. No, I'm not. I didn't. I'm not filming you. I'm, I'm periscoping. 
What's that? Oh, it's some new goofy shit that I guess you have to do to win more fans over to more, you know, so, so people can congratulate you and, and, and hit the heart. Look, I got 17 people. Look at, I got hearts. That means people like what I'm doing. Yeah. But you're just walking through a store, right? Yeah, I know. I'm going to buy eggs and there's nine people around the world that are following me, watching me buy some fucking eggs. Well, why would they watch you buy eggs, sir? I don't understand this. What is this? Periscope? Yeah, yeah. It's this new app on your phone. You download it. You could basically fucking film yourself. And then it, I think it's gone in like 24 hours. I really didn't do a lot of research on it because I really don't give a fuck. But everyone told me, you got a Periscope. Come on. Everybody's doing it. So join the bandwagon. Because in six months, there'll be something else, and everybody will be doing that. But for the time being, tell everybody, hey, I'm on Periscope. Download the free app and watch me buy eggs. <clears throat> so what? So there's eight people. Wa- yeah. Hey, look, look. You see right here? Look. There's a heart. Oh, a heart just popped up. Yep. No, I got nine people watching. Eleven people are watching me buy eggs. Isn't that great? You know what, miss? I got to go because I don't want to bore the 11 people around the world watching me. They obviously got nothing else going on in their lives. Ooh, Jim's periscoping. He said he's going to go buy some eggs. Let's run to our fucking phones. Fire that periscope up. All right. I'm in the egg section. Ooh. Let me check because, you know, when you buy eggs, you really want to make sure you don't get one that's cracked. Because sometimes in the delivery, you know what I mean? The guy might hit a pothole or something like that or maybe throw them around the back. You don't want any cracked eggs. What are you going to do with that? Wait, so let me open the carton. Hmm. Well, this one looks good. Here's 12 nice eggs. Oh, they got like. Organic eggs, they got regular eggs, 36 eggs. How many should I get? Do I really need organic eggs? What's the difference? You know what I mean? Like it's inside the shell. Does it, you know, did any pesticides get inside the shell? I don't know. I don't know how that works. The organic stuff's a little more. Do I really need the organic? I don't know. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to try the organic eggs. You know what I mean? Everyone's on this organic craze. Let me let me, I'm going to go home and I'm going to make these eggs and I'm going to taste them and I'll get back I'll periscope again to let you know if these eggs taste any different. If it was worth 40 more cents for 12 eggs. So I can get organic eggs. That's what I'm going to do cuz I'll be a good now be a, another good periscope. So, you know, stay tuned cuz like in, in another hour I'm going to periscope again, and I'm going to tell you how good these eggs are. I might even film me cooking the eggs. That would be fat. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? The 11 people watching. Do you like that? Ooh, another heart popped up. Oh, you like that? Oh, another one. I got 13 people. They're spreading the word. Hey, 13 people around the world. 13, I said. 13 people watching. Can you... Let everyone know, your friends know in an hour, I'm going to cook the eggs and we're going to taste them to see if there's any difference. Okay. All right. Let me walk up to the register. Whoops. Whoa. It's a Sunday morning. There's a lot of people here. Wow. Whoa. Excuse me. Excuse me. You know, you should never go shopping on a Sunday. You should try to do it during a week or at night, like a Friday night. There's nobody in the store. Did you know? Look at all these people. Wait, wait. Let me periscope. Let me go down this aisle. Whoop, down this aisle. Oh, here's the fucking snack aisle. A lot of people down there. Did you know that on Sunday mornings, a lot of people shop for the week? You know, it's good that I'm Periscope because you guys would have never known that. Like, hey, man, you know what? Sunday morning is probably going to be packed. There's a lot of people that are taking their time. They're off. They're in no rush. So everybody's moving slow. All right, I'm up at the register. Wow, look at all these lines. What? Wait, what register you think I should go to? You know what this you do? Uh, put, uh, put like, uh, have a heart pop up if you want me to go and register. Look, here's all the lines. Register two, four, and eight are open, okay? Anybody want me to go to register two will think that's quicker. Hit the heart. 
Whoop. Oh, three hearts on that one. How about register four? Ooh, no hearts. They think, oh, you guys think that's going to be a long line. How about register eight? Five hearts. Holy shit. All right, I'm going to register eight. All right, I don't want to bore you guys anymore, even though you're probably not. If you follow me buying fucking eggs, you got nothing else going on in your life. I guess you don't have any family. You don't have any friends. You don't have any hobbies. You're just fucking following some asshole walking around filming himself. And there's a reason it goes away in 24 hours on Periscope because it's fucking uninteresting. And nobody wants to save that anywhere. That's why it goes away quick. It's just fucking nonsense, drivel, unnecessary, egotistical. If you got, you know, if you got a radio show, you know what I mean? You got a guest in there. That's a good thing. I don't like when people are periscoping fucking concerts. That means no one wants to, someone's just going to sit home and not buy a fucking ticket and that band's not going to get that money. I don't, some chick was trying to periscope my comedy show one time and I go, don't do it. Put it down. She goes, are you serious? I go, yeah. I go, how many people watch it? She goes, six. I go, fucking shut it off. I made her shut off. She was mad at me the rest of the show. She's bad mouthed me in the back of the room. Sorry, you, you can't fucking periscope my comedy show. And put it out there. But you got a radio show. You got a guest in. I get it. There are certain point, certain things where, yeah, this will be good. We can't film it or whatever. I get it. But just who gives a fuck? Think about it. Am I really going to sell any more comedy tickets? If I, if I join Periscope. The same people that follow me on Twitter that are on my Facebook fan page that are on my mailing list, that hear me on the radio plugging gigs or listen to this podcast are the same people who are going to join Periscope if I joined. So how am I going to win over any new fans? The same people that are on Instagram are not going to go, are they going to be the same people that might follow me on Periscope when I go to buy some fucking eggs? So how does that help me in any way? If I sell 220 tickets in St. Louis when I go there in a few weeks on a Friday night, do you think because I joined Periscope, I'm going to sell 400? Do you think there's 180 new people in St. Louis that are going to come see my stand-up comedy because I joined Periscope and I'm walking around showing you that I'm going to buy some fucking eggs? That's all it is in a nutshell. Nobody gives a fuck. And that's the whole pitch with Periscope. Dude, come on, man. You got to fucking join it, man. You got to keep your name out there. You got to fucking, you know, everybody's doing it. I don't, it's so, that means I got to do it because everybody's doing it. I got suckered in that Instagram thing. Dude, you're in the business. You got an Instagram. Okay. I've been on there. I haven't sold one extra ticket. I've been, I've been on Instagram for a year and a half. I haven't sold one extra ticket. Nobody has come up to me after a show go, man, dude, I would never heard of you until you joined Instagram. It's all bullshit. All bullshit. I never joined Flickr. And you know what? Posted my pictures then. And you know what? I still will sell out three or four shows in St. Louis when I go there. And I wasn't on Flickr. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's fucking nuts. I never wrote a blog. And I sold those. Isn't that fucking nuts? How does that work? Since Periscope has come out, my agent or any club owner never go, dude, man, you didn't really sell the same amount of tickets you did last time you were here. Maybe you should join Periscope. Nobody has said that. The bottom line, nobody gives a shit. And it's just more unnecessary shit to fill people's empty lives. Do you see him on Periscope? He's walking down the street. Whew. I mean, that's what people are doing. That's their entertainment. That's sad. Um, stick figure families on the back of a, a fucking truck. A family van. People been that drives people. Nuts. I've gotten so many emails over, dude. Those stick figure families. They put the stickers on the back. You got to do something about it. And I've seen this one for a while, and I get these emails all the time. I just don't have enough on that. I don't like it. It's stupid. I just can't do an hour on that. That'd be tough. 
like basically you're bragging that you you know you popped out a few kids, you got a couple of fucking pets, and you're one big happy family, right? Is that what you try, is that what the motivation is? That you know, mother, father, three kids, a dog, and a cat. Okay, great. So you put the sticker up. Ha ha ha. Okay. So when people sitting behind you go, wow, they got two kids, a cat and a dog. Ooh. Meanwhile, you pull up next to that truck. Kid's got his face in his phone. The other girl's fucking looking out the window, just, you know, in her own little world. Nobody's talking in the truck. There's just tension. The dog is running back and forth. The mother's yelling at it. Sounds like a fucking happy family. Look at that truck. It's a, they, they look real happy, don't they? No communication. Everybody's looking down at their fucking, their phones, texting, Snapchatting, doing whatever. The mother's looking straight ahead. She's got some fucking goofy song on the radio she's singing. Her kids are disgusted with her. Maybe the dad's in the truck too. He's just looking straight ahead going, what the fuck did I do in my life? This is what I'm stuck with. Stickers on the back of a window. And my wife's singing Hall and Oats. And my kid's not even acknowledging me, giving me one-word answers. Hey, son, how was school today? Good. You got a lot of homework? Eh, a little. Um, you still want to go to that show on Saturday? You know, like that band, maybe you said you liked them. You, I don't know. All right, well, you know, let me know. You know what I mean? So I can go get the tickets early, you know, or we go on StubHub. Okay. All right, I'm I got I'm gonna go in my room. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Seems like a real fucking happy family life. Are you bragging because of those stickers? Like, hey, look at me. We have a family. Yeah, a lot of people do. Here's my dog. I did put the all. Oh. And I got we got a cat. We gotta go get a cat sticker. If your kids are involved in that decision, I get it. I like I always say, when you got kids in the mix, throw everything out the window. You gotta do corny shit with your kids. If your kids suggest it and really wanna do it, I got no problem with it. You can't you know what I mean? You can't tell a five year old he's like, I wanna put stickers on the window. Come on, me and my sister and dad and mom, and we got to get a dog sticker now because we just bought a dog and we got a, we just got a cat. We got mom, dad, can we go get a cat sticker to put on? Because now we have a cat. You know what? Throw all that shit out the window. You can't be a dick and go, fuck you. That's stupid. No, that's stupid. I, I don't even do that. Even though I think it's stupid, I don't even do that. It's for your kid, you do it. You know what I mean? You just take the bullet and you do it. Same with like the pumpkin picking thing. I don't like that. But if your kids are involved, I don't like camping. But if your kids want to go camping, they want to go pumpkin picking, you go do it. You don't go, I'm not going fucking pumpkin picking. Sorry. And the stick figures, if the kids are involved, but most time it's not. It's the fucking parents going, look, I got one big happy family. Yeah, a guy driving a fucking Range Rover has got six stickers on the back. A wife, three kids, a fucking dog, and a cat. All right? And he's at a traffic light. Some hot chick pulls up next to him, and he's fucking just drooling looking at her. Really? What about those stickers on the back of your fucking truck, asshole? Do you remember you have a family? Why are you looking at that fucking hot 20-year-old? I get it, but if you're so happy and you want to brag to everybody, look at me, I'm a big family, man, then don't look at that chick. How about that? Fair enough? Is that fair enough? How about mom? Hey, mom, stop flirting with that guy you went to high school on Facebook. Right? Look at your back of your truck. You got one big happy family. What are you doing? Why is it getting a little weird, huh? With your conversations between you two on Facebook. Isn't that strange? You know, as soon as your husband goes to work or maybe late at night. All right. You're, is she asleep? Yeah, my husband's asleep. Is your girlfriend asleep? Yeah. And then you're doing that. That's weird. You got your fucking one big happy family according to those stickers in the back of your fucking truck.
what happens? Let's just say one of the, I don't know. Nah, yeah. What happens if one of the kids goes missing? Do you take that sticker off for a little while? Do you peel it off until he until you find them and then put it back? Does somebody pull up to you and go, hey, you're that family with that kid missing, right? Yeah. Well, how come he's still on the back of your truck? You probably scrape it off for a little bit and then tape it back when you find them. Halloween just passed this weekend. And I get a ton of people saying, dude, grown-ups wearing costumes. Come on, go off on it. You're a fucking grown man. Why are these adults wearing costumes? I've been on the fence with this one for a long, for probably three years now. And I know this is something that right up my alley where I'm going to hate and go off on. It is just something, right? You know, you're like, all right, he's definitely, there's no way he likes to grown ups fucking wearing costumes and going to Halloween parties. There's no way he could like that. And I get that. It's just that I don't have a big problem with it. I know it fucking hurts. I know everyone that sent me an email about it, everyone that hates it, it is disappointed in my decision on this. I get it. It just doesn't. I've done it before. I don't like it. I'm not crazy about it, but I don't frown on it. You know, because it's like, I don't know, you go, I'm all for like hanging out with friends, going to a party and hanging out with friends, fucking drinking beers, having a few laughs, having a bunch of people over. I love shit like that. That's my favorite thing to do. So in a gathering like that, like someone has a Halloween party at the house on a Saturday night, that's a a get-together where a lot of people are busy and can't do that shit, where you see people and you can hang with them. So it's like, hey, you know, we got to do this Saturday. It's Halloween. We got to go out. Come on, they're having a party and we'll, we'll go over to the house. And you haven't seen people in a while. It's almost like the Super Bowl. You know, a big Super Bowl party. You haven't seen people in a while. They all get together. You know, and the game's on. That's like secondary. But you hang with friends. I do it every year, too. So I don't... I just don't like where... But then again, I don't know, man. I'm fucking mixed on this. I really am. I've lost sleep over this this week. About what I should do about Halloween. And the barrage of emails I got. Dude, fucking grown-ups, you know, dressing up. But look, if you're... It's a Saturday night. Halloween was just on... And even if you're older, you know, young kids, of course, are going to go out and fucking, you know, go go to a club, go to New York City, go somewhere, go to do a parade or something like that. You know, I, mean? I can't fucking fault that. Some 21 year old kid wants to dress up like a zombie and go drink and go to a parade. And there's going to be a bunch of chicks there or he's going with his girlfriend. There's a bunch of people they know. I don't I can't I can't fucking I can't fault them on that. There's no way. I'm not going to go, dude, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, it's, what else am I going to do on a Saturday? I get it. And as you get older, you know, you marry with a couple kids on a Saturday night, Halloween. It's like, all right, hey, this fucking couple down the street's having a Halloween party. I'll fucking throw on a straw hat. Or I'll put some overalls on and go as a fucking farmer. The hell. So I kind of get it. I've done a couple of them before. I haven't done one probably in about 10 years. I haven't dressed up. I did last year. I, th- I forget what I did with my son. We went around the little neighborhood and fucking I put something on. You know, he wanted me to. And I was like, all right, you know. Right after OJ got convicted, I went as, um, I got bought an OJ mask put a white t-shirt on, put blood all over, fake blood all over, put Nicole on the back with the number 32 because that was his football number and wrote Nicole over it and and held like a plastic knife and went to a party like that. And people were disgusted. I went with a girlfriend at the time. I didn't know who her friends were. I knew a couple people, but it was like pretty much this other person's party and nobody wanted any part of me. I took the OJ mask off once. The rest of the time, I just cut a hole open in the mouth enough where I can drink beer. And I just stood there in the corner and just drank out of my OJ mask with blood all over my shirt. People were fucking horrified and disgusted. 
The next year, I went to another Halloween party. I went as a used tampon. Same thing, white T-shirt, blood all over it, and got a bunch of tampons, put fake blood on them, and taped them all over my head. I had like 10 hanging, almost like fucking dreads all over me, taped them on my fucking, on my shirt, my neck, my face, just bloody tampons all over it, and one is a bloody tampon. Those are the last two costumes I did. We're going to Halloween parties. Again, people were, were horrified. The guys fucking thought it was funny. The women wanted nothing to do with me. But, I don't know. I was in New York City last night. Fucking just people walking around, dressed up. Didn't really bother me. I know it should. I'm not softening with age. Believe me. <clears throat> just this one, I, I, I can't pick apart that much I don't know you know it's work dress up for Halloween all right all right guy comes in he wants to dress up <clears throat> you know some stupid outfit I don't know I, I, I can't go after it I'm not even gonna try to fake it because I won't fake it I'll never fake it I mean, Halloween eventually is going to go away anyway. We're in such politically correct times, you know, with all the scary shit and stuff like that and skeletons and fucking broken arms. There's a whole thing. This guy in Jersey did like an ISIS thing in his neighborhood and the news was there. and People were offended and shit like that. And I mean, so eventually, because it's, you know, you know, evil. My son cannot wear a mask to school. For Halloween. First of all, they couldn't even wear Halloween outfits. You know, I guess because, you know, if one kid doesn't wear one or one kid's had a shitty Halloween outfit and the other kids are good, they're going to make fun of them. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. But you can't even wear a mask, a Halloween mask to a school for Halloween. I don't know. My son's five. I don't know. I, I, what are you worried that might, what might be under that mask? He's fucking... He's three feet, two inches tall. Is he part of ISIS? You know what I mean? Is that what they're worried about? That uh, We don't know who. He's got blonde hair sticking out of his mask. Is he part of ISIS? Even if he was part of ISIS, he's not tall enough to fucking slit somebody's neck. He's not tall enough. Have you ever seen a fucking five-year-old in an ISIS video? I pull up to a school and, and he's in a, sitting in a car seat. Is he part of ISIS? Who is that under that mask that's sitting in that car seat? Holy shit. So, look, eventually, I don't know, maybe within 10 years, it'll just be like you have to be a nice costume. It can't be gory or anything like that. Probably, you know going to offend somebody you know how many people this year in halloween went for blackface and going to lose their job how many white people did that and somebody took a fucking picture of that and posted it on facebook and that a school teacher or whatever it is fucking lost their job at this point i mean do you not know probably if you're a white person don't go in blackface unless you work a construction job and your boss doesn't give a fuck and nobody there is politically correct because you're fucking shitting in spackle buckets and fucking, you know, going to lunch at the strip club and drinking beers. Those people probably aren't going to care if you went in blackface and you're not going to lose your job. But other than that, you probably shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? If you, got, if you have the attitude like, yo, fuck it, I'm going in blackface. It's going to be funny. I'm going as, I don't know, Jay-Z or something. You're probably going to lose your job. Just, you know, you can't do that. You just can't. But every year, this fucking picture circling, circulating around. Some guy wearing his fucking went in blackface. <laughs> so, I got nothing on Halloween. I'm sorry. Daylight savings time just fucking started today. I don't like day, daylight savings time. There's no reason to put the clocks back an hour. I think it's Arizona. We don't even acknowledge it. That's beautiful. And there's some other parts of the country that don't acknowledge daylight savings time. Good. 
part of Indiana. I think like half the state does, half the state doesn't. Good. Nobody should. I don't want it getting fucking dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. Who, who does that benefit? It benefits nobody. I want it to be light 24 hours a day. I never want it to be dark. And I don't want it to be dark at 4.30. On the East Coast, it's fucking starting to get cold out. It's miserable. You got to wear sweaters, jackets, hats. Fucking leaves are falling. Fucking shit all over the place. And now it's going to get dark at 4.30. It's depressing enough the summer's over. Now I 4.30, it's fucking pitch black. That's great. Oh, but it's, dark, it's, 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 it's lighter in the morning. Who gives a shit? I don't give a fuck. Just keep it the same time all the time. Nobody wants daylight savings time. Nobody looks forward to it. Everybody fucking hates it. They already shave like two weeks off the back end and two weeks off the front end or something to make it like a month less of daylight savings time because nobody likes it. Just get fucking rid of it. I don't give a shit that it's light out at six in the morning. I'm not up then. That's great. You work your ass off nine to five. Then you got to drive home. You got to fucking stuck in rush hour traffic and it's pitch black out. That's fucking awesome. Okay. Thanksgiving is coming up. All right. So call anybody out. I, to- I-, I think I talked about this last time or maybe on the awful slang podcast about this friends giving. We're going to have a friends giving. You know, it's not going to be family members. It's just going to be a bunch of friends to get together. So we're going to call Friendsgiving. Tell them you're not going because they called them that. Because they called it Friendsgiving. Give anyone shit. You see anything on on fucking Facebook anywhere where someone goes, well, we're going to have a Friendsgiving this uh, Friday because a bunch of people are in town or a Wednesday before Thanksgiving or our families are, you know, away. So, you know, we can't get back for the holiday you know, so we're just going to have a friend's giving. Call them out, please. Go, what the, just go, what is that? What's a friend's giving? Why would you call it that? Please, that's got to go away. That's one of the worst things I've ever heard. We're going to have a friend's giving this year because, you know, a lot of us can't, they can't afford to fly back to California to see our family. So we'll just all our friends get together. It's a friend's giving. Ugh. You know that that came from some fucking corny white ball, corny fucking white guy, a white girl, fucking some some woman that goes to wine and paint parties, came up with that. Who had that little call Friendsgiving, and then put that on fucking Facebook, and everyone's like, "Yeah, that, I like that Friends. That's fun. That's good." Yeah, we're gonna go. Did you hear about these wine and paint parties? Somebody sent me an email about that, and I started reading about it. I did a little research on it, where you can go, you bring your bottle, of, your favorite bottle of wine, and you go paint. It's like a class you take. Sometimes they'll come to your house and they'll set it up, and you have a wine and paint party. So all these fucking pretentious women, well, I, I like wine. I'm going to bring my favorite bottles. I'll bring two bottles. And they go and they take like a paint cl- class and they paint. But they drink their, their wine. I got to drink my wine. And then they paint and then they take pictures of it and they put it on Instagram and Facebook. Go, look what I did. I was at my wine and paint party and this is what I painted. Not bad for someone under three glasses of wine, huh? So that's their excuse when it looks like mediocre, that they were drinking wine, so it didn't come out great. But look what I did. I had so much fun on my wine and paint party. And there's guys that go to that too. Imagine a guy that has to go to that. Yeah, I'll go. You don't want to be there, motherfucker. You never want to be there. I like drinking wine. Yeah, okay. Good for you. You really want to go to a, a wine and paint part? Yeah, we're going to learn to paint as an instructor. And he kind of gives us, you know, an idea what to do. And we take them home, too. But first, we got to post them on social media and tell everyone what an awesome time we had at the wine and paint party. I bought my bottle. My, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to bring the cab. Are you, what are you going to bring? I'll bring the Merlot. You're going to bring white or red? Get, bring, bring red. Hey. 
I'll try your one. You want to try mine? Okay. Hi, I'm Stacy. What's your name? I'm Melissa. Hi. Cheers. Mmm. I like this. Yeah. Wow. Where'd you get this? I got it. There's a liquor store right down in the CCAZ. And they got CCAZ. They got it for CCAZ. Really? What region is this from? Go fuck yourself. This is from this region. I always thought that Napa, I you know that the soil there is. Yeah. Oh, I. What are you painting? Uh, an elephant. Oh, well. Let me just turn. Oh, I'll paint an elephant too. Turn around. I'll just fucking paint your ass. Here's a band out of Austin, Texas, called The Sword. Doom metal at its best. They got an album out called High Country. This is the title track. Please don't ever go to a wine and paint party. Please. I can bring my wine. I'll bring my glass. They have glasses. I want to bring my special glass because I like to drink my wine out of my glass. Ick. 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 Ick.